Um, what are the pros and cons of opening up against a team that you've already faced twice this season? Familiarity, uh, number one. Um, number two, I think that uh, in reference to our opponent, it obviously will grab our players' attention. They'll be respected and uh, we'll know we need to put a good week of preparation in. Sure. Very few of your players have postseason experience. I want to say maybe Tanner Otremba is the only one who's played in the NCAA tournament. Um, does that matter? Not this year, because nobody in the country has played in the NCAA tournament in two years. So you don't think that's you don't think that's a factor? Not concerned. One way or the other. Okay. What are your thoughts on the the composition of the regional overall? Well, it's a great field, and it's to be expected. I think there were so many teams in contention for bids. You knew you were going to end up with three good opponents. So that is not a surprise to me at all. I think when looking at the teams, starting with Grand Canyon, um, I have a ton of respect for Andy Stankowitz. He's a terrific coach. They've done a great job with that program. Uh, Greg Wallace, their recruiting coordinator, is one of the hardest working guys in the country. You know, I rarely go out in the summertime without seeing him. Uh, John Winty, their their new pitching coach this year, was a longtime head coach at Central Arizona, and really built that program. And has their pitching staff is really good, and and I'm sure he, his fingerprints are all over that, you know, and working with those guys on a daily basis. So, ton of respect for Grand Canyon. Um, you know, looking at the rest of the bracket, Oklahoma State, uh, you know, their perennial NCAA tournament team, you know, twenty time, you know, Omaha type program have great players. They're on TV all the time. So I've actually seen a lot of them this year, just, you know, casually, um, know they're, they're talented and, uh, you know, we'll be a, a good, good team. And then you see Santa Barbara, um, you know, very complete in terms of pitching. Um, they had the best offense in the big West. Uh, we're a very deserving team of being in the tournament that maybe didn't know they were going to be in the tournament, but for me, it wasn't really a question. So, um, Great field, you know, uh, great coaching staffs uh, for all four programs, great players for all four programs. Sure. Obviously, it was um, like kind of feels like a million years ago, 2016, but you did face Oklahoma State, you know, three times um, in the College World Series and UC Santa Barbara once. The players have all changed, but does it help you as a coaching staff at all to 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 be familiar with um, the other teams coach kind of how they play, what their style might be. You know, maybe a little bit, I think, uh, you know, the players in, in college baseball, it's not even year to year, it's day to day in, with this age group. So, you know, we'll, even with grand Canyon, I mean, we played them May 4th, I believe that feels like a really long time ago to me. So at least in terms of my preparation, I'm going to reboot and completely start over, um, you know, with, with their team. You know, in reference to the, the, the programs, I mean, Josh is a great coach. Um, and it's kind of funny, and I've thought about this a lot this year, if I go back 15 years or 16 years, or 14, 15 years in my head of, you know, when I was busting my tail and cutting my chops and, and recruiting and, and being out there, and you think about, okay, who were the guys, you know, really doing that, you know, at that time, it was Andrew Checkets, you know, the coach at Santa Barbara, it was Josh Holiday whether he was at Arizona state or Vanderbilt, it was, you know, Mark Wazikowski, Andy Stankowitz was at Arizona state. And so it's not a surprise that these are the guys uh, that we're facing off against and, and all these programs are really successful and that bleeds into how their teams play. So ton of respect. Next question, Alec White, Arizona daily star. Yeah, coach, you were pretty adamant over the weekend that Arizona was going to get a top eight seed, and you were correct with that. And you had it pegged at, you know, four, five, six, and you guys were five. So I'm assuming you're you're pretty happy getting that that five seed. Yeah, I think it, it's it's only a number, but let's let's talk about the number for a second. There's 300 teams that play Division One baseball, so you're in the you're the, the top of the one percent. So I'm I'm proud of the players for accomplishing that. And, you know, today was kind of the last celebratory day of what they've accomplished to this point. And so to have, you know, postseason baseball at High Corbett, uh, to be in that position is a tremendous accomplishment. I think we're more than deserving uh, of that that number and that seed. Yeah, it could have been one better, could have been one worse, but that's they hire other people to decide those things. So now it's just about the play and it's about the preparation. And that's my sweet spot, my comfort zone. 
mine and my staff strength. So we'll put our, our work, uh, work on that to this point forward, but I'm a proud of, I'm proud of the players. I, I don't know this to be true, but I think it's the first time in program history that we've been a national seed since the format changed. If, if it's not the first, I think it's the second, but, uh, proud of the players for getting that done. And then what did you make of the PAC 12 getting six teams in? I thought it was a lock. I really did. Um, I think, you know, even a team like Cal had the personnel and the talent to do it. Um, this is a hard job for the committee this year. This, not all schedules were created equal. Not all seasons were created equal. Not all fall practices were created equal. So I, I kind of watched the show with like great interest this year. Of like it was going to be a little bit different and it probably was um, just really happy for our team and, and this opportunity. Next question, Brian Peterson, Arizona Desert Storm. Your team and Santa Barbara come into the tournament having played regular season games at the end of the season, though Santa Barbara had conference games, whereas Oklahoma State and Grand Canyon played in conference tournaments and played in high high leverage games in their last game in the conference championships. Do you, do you see one or the other as an advantage or a disadvantage right before the, the NCAA tournament? Well, we played in a lot of one-run games against NCAA tournament teams. Um, I, I, I'm comfortable with where we're at, um, and that's really all I have control over. Um, so I think there's advantages to both. I think you're right. I think uh, something that I've really tried to establish in our culture is that every game really, really matters, and I think this team has done a good job exhibiting that, and it feels like we've been in playoff baseball prior to being in playoff baseball. I think, uh, you know, if you're in a tournament setting, um, you know, you kind of get the feel for that. But this weekend we hit in the cages instead of on the field, you know, preparing for it being the second game. I had them show up a little bit later since we're going to play at seven instead of six. I think we only had one 7 p.m. game the entire year this year. So we tried to simulate that as best we could this weekend to, to prepare us for next for this coming weekend is the fact that the last game against Dixie that it went down to the wire can does that provide at least some semblance of like a uh, a great way to finish off and and springboard I guess yeah it was a special night I think uh something I'm proud of this team is they they are very comfortable competing in close games and if you go back the last few weekends great experience there uh, against Dixie State the Oregon State Sunday game obviously the Washington game, the Friday, the week before the Stanford game, the Friday, the week before, you know, we had a close one against Cal, close one against Oregon, close one against Arizona state, close one against UCLA. So it's kind of, we're, we at least every week at Utah, it's kind of all we know, you know what I mean? And, and the boat race games are easy. You know what I mean? Like they're not easy to get to there, but it's, it's different, but I think our players have performed well in close games. And I think that is, is important going into the tournament. Thank you. Next question back to Michael Lev. What does it mean or, or could it mean to be able to play at home um, all the way through here should you advance? I think it's enormous. Uh, I think it's validation of a job well done for the season, which we already know that. I think uh, I take a lot of pride in how we play it at High Corbett Field. And uh, I know our players do as well. I think there's some benefits of uh, staying in routine a little bit um, and uh, it's a great home field advantage and so we want to want to run this thing as hard and as far as we possibly can and there's no place I'd rather do that than our home ballpark. Will you always be in the third base dugout or could you be in either? No it's they changed the rule a couple of years ago uh, we're, we'll use the home team regardless if your home or visitor stays in the home team dugout so we will be in the first base dugout the entire I'm First base dugout. That's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. not third. Base no, dugout. that's okay. And it changed. Uh, you know, it changed. I think in seventeen, because in in sixteen, when we played Louisiana Lafayette, <laughs> it's like they have this system that's hard to figure out as far as home and away. But if you're the home team, you get to choose their dugout, choose your dugout. And so somehow we ended up being the home team in both of those games in the regional final. And the first thing I said is, "We're taking their dugout." <laughs> and so. Uh, yeah, now I'm glad they don't have that rule anymore. <laughs> sure. Um, do you, have you ever noticed uh, teams maybe facing a, a bit of an adjustment period when they play at high corporate for the first time because the dimensions are so different than what most teams are used to? 
Yeah, I think that's anywhere. Um, I really do. Um, you know, you feel it when you go for that Thursday practice when you're on the road and, uh, you know, everybody will be able to practice here Thursday. And so, yeah, I mean, I love playing here and, um, looking forward to, to playing here. And, you know, I think, I don't know what the statistics would be, but you know, the home field advantage in college baseball is, is one of the most underrated things. And, um, so yeah, I'm sure there's an adjustment. Is instant replay in effect for the NCAA tournament? Yes. Are you up on all of the the rules and how many challenges and what you can challenge and all those types oh, yeah. of things. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had it in Frisco, uh, in the Frisco classic, which was beneficial and I'm all for it. I mean, in the PAC 12, we need to get that done next year. Have to get that done. Next question. Ari Coslow, daily wildcat. Uh, is the expectation still for still sets the fish game one, urban game two, and then TBD for game three. Yeah, we're, we will not be announcing any starting pitcher the entire postseason until the day of the game. Do we have any more questions for Coach Johnson? Yes, Michael, go ahead. What's the roster size for the tournament? 27, same as Pac-12 play. Same as Pac-12, okay. Um, do you, in the past, and, and maybe this is a, the case with, with a lot of teams that you know try to make a long run in the postseason, they kind of constrict their pitching staff you know, like there's a certain number of guys uh, that they trust and they go to those guys over and over and 16, you, you know, you did that too, but do you feel like there are more pitchers on this staff that you trust than maybe any previous one that you've had here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I only laugh, Michael, cause I mean, you've been, been here the entire time and, you know, I mean, we made that, that run in 16 using six guys and, um, uh, you know, in 17, one of the best offenses in college baseball. 18, we actually pitched all right, but it was a very top-heavy staff. The depth wasn't as good as you would want it to be. Uh, 19, I mean, again, Oklahoma football, you know, on offense and, and on defense, frankly. And, you know, I think, you know, like I said, seven and a half, eight scholarships in pitching was to put us in position when you're in, in five games and four days in the NCAA tournament that you can do that. And we definitely can do that. And, um, you know, we really were deliberate in how we did what we did this last weekend, you know, to put all those guys in position to be their best for this weekend. Next question back to Ari Coslow. You guys face Grand Canyon twice, like in midweek games, but now facing him on a Friday, does that change how you prepare for them at all? For sure. I mean, you're going to face a different pitcher, you know, everybody's pitching staff in the opening game of the tournament, all hands will be on deck. So, and then they played four game weekends. So their four starters will figure into the bullpen mix for Friday. And like I said, with their entire team, I'm going to, I'll go back to the drawing board and start over. I did. Yes. I knew we were playing them yesterday, not because I knew, but because that's how the NCAA tournament goes and unfolds regionally. So, um, once I kind of went through and established they were going to be a four seed and not a three seed, I knew that's who we were playing. So I started I started it on that yesterday and spent a good deal of time on their weekend pitching. 